Welcome everyone to this Hytognos workshop for the ICCS 2020 virtual meeting. My name is Erin Gonzalez and I have a dual role in sales and support. I am the key account manager for the East Coast in Canada and also the site and support manager at Hytognos USA. Today I'm presenting the next generation flow solution to monitor multiple myeloma. This is going to be the agenda for today. First, I will introduce Cytognos, who we are, what we do, and where we come from. Then I will move to our next generation flow solution to detect MRD in multiple myeloma patients, which includes the antibody panel, the laboratory SOPs, and the Infinicide software. And finally, we will jump into the software for a live practical analysis of an MMMRD case. So let's start. Cytognos is a clinical flow cytometry company that offers end-to-end -end solutions for oncomatology, clinical immunology, and clinical trials. Our aim then is to enhance patient care and improve the efficiency and workflow in the lab through our standardized, efficient, reproducible, and highly sensitive solutions. Here's a little bit about our history through the years. We were created back in 1996, so we have been around for about 25 years. And we were initially founded within the hematology department of the University of Salamanca in Spain. In 2006, we started to collaborate with the Eurofro group in bringing its validated flow cytometry method to the market, including the selected antibody panels and the Infinicide analysis software. And from there, we started to commercialize the lyophilized reagent kits. We developed uh, an automated analysis approach and we incorporated a CIBD instrument, the Omnisite. So as you can see, we have grown over the years, expanding our portfolio to offer a complete solutions for clinical labs and also expanding the applications of our solutions. In 2019, we opened our first office in the US, um, based out of Boston, Massachusetts. And the most recent update is that we have included the 21 CFR Part 11 compliance tools in the software. Cytognos is a global company. We are present in over 54 countries in the world across the five continents. And our headquarters lie in Salamanca, Spain, but we have offices in Boston to cover the US and Canada. Okay, so let me begin by highlighting the clinical value of MRD in multiple myeloma. MRD is important as a prognostic marker because sustained MRD negative patients have a better progression free survival and overall survival. And also, MRD is a surrogate endpoint for clinical trials, as it can demonstrate the efficacy of the treatment much sooner than a clinical endpoint like overall survival. New treatments have brought about a new definition of remission based on the improved detection of very low levels of malignant cells. And in flow cytometry, the definition of MRD negativity according to the International Myeloma Working Group is the absence of aberrant plasma cells at a minimum of 10 to the minus 5 sensitivity. Now, when it comes to monitor multiple myeloma patients, we want to give a quick and accurate response to the clinicians so they can make the right therapeutic decision for the patient. And that's why we need a technique that allows for an effective detection of abnormal plasma cells at low levels highly sensitive to avoid false negatives, compatible with immunotherapies, and at the same time, cost-effective, accessible, and fast. All things considered, flow cytometry can be a very good option. Okay, for those of you running clinical trials, the FDA and the EMA has some recommendations for the use of MRD as a biomarker in drug development. And these recommendations are 
pre-specify the total number of events to collect. Use a consistent panel of antibodies and fluorochromes, as no single antigen is specific for any blood cancer. Consider sample stability. Use a consistent analysis template and gating strategies. Overcome antigen loss post drug treatment. Detect normal bone marrow cells that are regenerating after chemotherapy. And report hemodilution. Now, our next generation flow solution meets all these requirements because it's a standardized um, covering all steps of the flow assay from sample preparation to data analysis and reporting. It is reproducible as it has been extensively validated by Euroflow Group. We obtain consist consistent results thanks to the comparison against the reference database in Infinisight. And there is a data analysis proficiency testing or QA program available. It is efficient um, as the panel was designed so the most informative markers, clones, and fluorochromes um, to discriminate normal and MRD populations were selected. It includes the 30 MRT epitopes, so anti C38 immunotherapies like daratumumab or ixatuximab. Uh, don't interfere, and the antibody cocktail is premixed and lyophilized, so it's more stable. Last but not least, the sensitivity. With this method, you can detect up to 20 cells in 10 million events, and that's a sensitivity of 10 to the minus 6, which is only comparable with the sensitivity of molecular methods. So. Instead of cocktailing your own antibody panel developed in-house, which takes time, effort, and can introduce additional errors, by using this approach, we eliminate the entire section of panel design, the SOPs creation, cocktailing, antibody titration, um, so we reduce the experimental cost. That's all done for you. Plus, we ensure that the differences we see in our samples are actually due to a biological difference. And for all of these benefits, this was the method of choice by the International Myeloma Working Group for the definition of MRD negativity. All of our solutions are backed up by Euroflow. And for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, Euroflow is an independent group of experts in the field of clinical flow cytometry that is made up of 22 institutions across Europe. They have been working for 14 years now in developing and validating a complete method to screen, classify, and monitor oncomatology diseases. And now there is also a great focus on immunological diseases. This is the Euroflow approach for hemato-oncology, and it consists of three steps. The screening, the classification, and the monitoring. So we run a screening tube up front, and depending on the cell lineage affected, we run the corresponding classification panel, and then for post-treatment evaluation, there are high sensitive panels to measure MRG. We have a complete workflow for acute leukemia, for chronic disorders, and also for plasma cell discrushes. So here we have the PCST plasma cell screening tube then the PCD classification panel or plasma cell discrushes panel and to follow up the patient we have the MMMRD panel in bone marrow and also the CTPC panel to detect uh, circulating tumor plasma cells in peripheral blood at diagnosis. As you can see in this approach 
we have one panel specifically designed to answer one clinical question. And this is a way to streamline our workflow in the lab. Um, so we can be more efficient as we avoid using redundant markers. And all of this is going to have a positive impact on the patient care we provide. Now, if we focus on the MMMRD, so what does Cytognos offer? We offer a validated antibody reagent kit, the standardized SOPs, the Infinisite software, and the Omnisite instrument. But I want to make it clear now that our solution is fully compatible with other, other instruments like the Fax Canto 2 or Fax Lyric, Nabios, etc. On top of the, the kit, the SOPs and the Infinisite software, we also offer the technical support and training required to implement this method. Okay, before we move forward, let's see why the sensitivity threshold matters in MMMRD flow testing. So this plot here show that clonal plasma cells can go undetected if our MMMRD assay doesn't have a high sensitivity. If we collect 10 million events, and that's the recommendation, we can easily pick up our clonal plasma cell population and the percentage of clonal plasma cells or MRD level is way above our lower limit of quantitation, so we can rely on our results. But the less number of events we collect, the less sensitivity we, we reach and the more difficult it is to identify our MRD population so that will ultimately impact on the way clinicians evaluate the response to treatment. Now let's go back to the Cytona solution and break it down for you. First we have the antibody reagent kit. This is a consensus 8 color 2 tube MMMRD panel which is optimized to clearly identify all plasma cells and to separate normal slash in regeneration cells and tumor cells. This is the information we can get out of this antibody panel, the uh, level of MRD, if the bone marrow is regenerating, if our sample is hemodiluted, and a detailed overview on the immunological status of the patient. We use uh, two tubes to confirm the actual presence of minimal residual disease in the bone marrow. And in this sense, this acts as an additional QC of the samples because we can be sure that um, we identify the population correctly if in both tubes we find the same population. A special feature of this panel is the 30A multi-epitope antibody. And this antibody allows for the detection of C38 even in anti-C38 therapy patients, like the daratumumab or isatuximab. We can see in these diagrams here that it shows positivity when compared with a common monoclonal antibody even when analyzing samples treated with uh, anti-C38 treatments. Okay, then we have the uh, standardized SOPs. We have SOPs in place for the bone marrow sample collection and transport, for the instrument setup, calibration and compensation for di different instruments like the Omnicide, the Fax Canto and Canto 2, Fax Lyric, uh, Forteza, Nabios, and the SOP for sample processing and staining. All these protocols have been validated and published by Euroflow, and you can check them out at the Euroflow website. Finally, the Infinisite software. 
Okay, myeloma MRD analysis is challenging. There is a high number of events and the pattern of marker expression of plasma cells, both normal and abnormal, is very heterogeneous and it can change over time with the treatment. So there is always a user bias in the analysis. Positive and negative populations are always clear, but what about everything in between positive and negative? What I consider a deemed positive population, you may not, uh, you might think it's negative. So we cannot consistently introduce the same gating strategy from one sample to the next. So the final results highly depend on the user expertise. The question is, how do we ensure we can reproduce data analysis results? The problem here is that we lack of a good reference point or baseline. And to overcome this, Cytognos has included a reference database of normals in InfiniSight software. This is a database built by the Euroflow group. They stained the cases with the MMRD panel. They processed the samples following the same standards. And they, as experts, identified all the populations in the samples. So this is a robust database we can rely on. What Cytognos has done here is to develop a feature in InfiniSight software that allows for the comparison of your cases against this database. And this is what we called automated gating and identification. So let's see how this works. The software compares your sample against a reference database of normal cases. And using algorithms, InfiniSight clusters and classifies your populations. And also generates an automatic report based on the reference database ranges. So this is a two-step process. First, there is a different from normal analysis approach done by the software. And then the user just needs to confirm if the case is positive or negative to obtain the report. This is an example of the automatic reporting. It shows the frequency of all the cell populations in your sample compared to the normal reference ranges. So it can flag little numeric and phenotypic changes that can go unnoticed with manual analysis. There are also quality flags like percentage of debris. And it shows the LOD and LOQ of your sample. And based on the mast cells counts, it shows if there is a problem of hemodilution in your sample. All right, so let's open the software now and see an MMMRD case live. We have opened an analyzed MMMRD case where we have performed the automated analysis and we have reclassified the abnormal population. InfiniSight integrates the two tubes in a single workspace, analyzes the MMMRD panel together and exports all data into a single report. So now we are looking at normal plasma cells in purple and the abnormal plasma cells in red from the two tubes together. In total, we have uh, 2 million of events in our sample, but note that this is below the recommended uh, number. Okay, InfiniSight includes this predefined MMMRD analysis template. Let me go over it. So in this template, we have the 2D plots um, showing the common expression patterns of plasma cells. We have the 13838, uh, we have the 4538, we have the 5619, the 3827, and all of these uh, plots are backbone markers. And then we have the 11781 
and the kappa and lambda, um, which are tube specific markers. Now we also have these phi Lambert plots here uh, showing both tubes to QC our sample as it allows us to verify if the staining of the common markers, in this case 38 and 138, were done correctly and in the same way in all the files. And we also have here the multidimensional analysis or APS plot. The APS separates the events of your sample based on likelihood and taking into account all the parameters of your file. So the events that are immunophenotypically similar will be closer together and the events, the events that are farther away, it is because they are less similar. In this case, we can differentiate uh, two populations, the uh, normal plasma cells and the abnormal plasma cells. We also have these reference APS diagrams with the uh, standard curves representing the normal populations included in the database and the dots representing the populations in my actual sample. All right, so let's see now what the software has done for us. Remember that uh, this automated gating and identification feature uh, compares the sample against a normal reference database and is able to identify all normal populations in my sample, including debris and doublets. And everything that doesn't have a normal phenotype, for example, the MRD cells, um, is put aside so the analyst can review that population and confirm if um, they are MRD. So this software has uh, classified plasma cells from both tubes. So we have the plasma cells from the first tube and from the second tube. These circles that we have here on each plot represents the median of events. Um, and as the protocols are standardized and we know we have reproducible results, the normal populations are going to fall into the same place. So this is a good way to QC our sample. Okay, not only the software has classified the plasma cell population, but also has defined which subset they are based on the 1956 expression. So inside of this 19 positive 56 compartment, the software has also separated the kappa positive and the lambda positive cells. All right, the normal mature B cells are also classified and we have the B cells from the first tube and also the B cells from the second tube. We also have here the B cell precursors from both tubes and uh, they are a really good indicator of the bone marrow immune regeneration along with the nucleated red cells that we also have here. And then we have other populations like T and K and basophils. We have the eosinophils, we have the neutrophils, the monocytes, the myelin precursors. And again, they are um, classified in both tubes and all has been done without the input of the user. There is another uh, important population here, which are the mast cells from the first tube, because they are the um, indicator of hemodilution. Okay, so as we can see, the software has automatically classified all populations we can analyze in a bone marrow sample with this specific combination of markers. Um, not only markers, but the marker, clone, and fluorochrome. And we can get the complete immune profile of our patient.
Okay, Infinicide um, has also excluded the debris and doublets from my sample. Let's take a look at it. And at the bottom of this population tree, we have our MRD cells. So these have been reclassified by the analyst. And this is a 30 event population. So it can easily go unnoticed when manual gating. But the software is so accurate that it's able to find and characterize these 30 events in um, 2 million total events. As you can see, we have a level of MRD here of 0.019%. Um, okay, so once we have completed the analysis of the sample, we can open now the automatic report. And in this automatic report, uh, we can find all relevant results obtained during the analysis together with predefined database specific alerts and comments. There are four main sections here. We have the cellularity table uh, with the percentage of the main populations referred to the nucleated cells, and that is the frequency. So if the values are out of range, they are displayed in bold. On the right, we have the uh, normal reference values for these populations. We also have information about the percentage of debris here. And this is important to know the quality of our sample. And also, we have the LOD and LOQ values that are already calculated and inform us if the sample is considered as MRD positive or not. In this specific case, our MRD percentage is below the lower limit of quantitation. Then we have the phenotype description of abnormal cells versus its normal counterpart here. And on the comment, um, on the comment section, we have the frequency of the plasma cells compartment and the software flags about the percentage of abnormal plasma cells because they are below the lower limit of quantitation. And finally, a conclusion about the compatibility of my sample with um, positive MRD. And also, um, a quality of, um, also information about the quality of my sample. Uh, in this case, there is a warning flag about the number of events. It does not allow to reach the uh, required sensitivity because it's below the um, recommendation. Okay, so in this automatic report, besides the MRD level and the diagrams, we can see other things that could be relevant information about the sample, such as if it was the diluted, if the bone marrow is regenerated, or even highlight technical problems, and all which can have a total impact on the feasibility and quality of the result. With this automatic reporting, we save time, we standardize our results and we facilitate the communication of the results between the lab and the clinicians. So at the end of the day, we are improving the quality of care for our patients. Now let's go back uh, to finish the presentation. So to wrap up, our next generation flow solution for myeloma MRD is standardized, is reproducible, is efficient, and it's highly sensitive. Here's our contact information. So if you have any question, uh, you want more information about our solution to monitor myeloma patients, or you just want to know what cytognos can offer to your lab, feel free to reach out to us. And I'm going to end here. Thank you so much for your attention today and take care.